welcome to this uh, lesson. Today we are going to look at uh, factors that influence the effectiveness of uh, advocacy process. So uh, we define advocacy as the process of uh, maybe speaking on behalf of the voiceless members. So there are a number of factors that we have now to influence the success of that advocacy process or maybe advocacy campaign. And the first factor here we have is uh, how well are you versed with the topic or maybe with the advocacy issue? So for you to be able to convince the policy makers, you as an advocacy team, you must be conversant with the advocacy issue that you are going to uh, present maybe to these policy makers. Just in case you do not, uh, maybe you've not carried out maybe thoroughly such on that particular process or on that particular policy, it will not be possible for you now to convince uh, those uh, policy makers. Uh, another factor that influences uh, the success of an uh, advocacy campaign is uh, your ability to speak clearly with authority. You will only be in a position to speak with authority if you are also conversant with what? With the advocacy issue. So without being conversant with that one, it will be difficult for you as the advocacy team now to speak clearly and also with authority. Another factor is uh, your reputation in the society. Here we are looking at your standing in the, in the society. Uh, are you somebody such that uh, whenever you talk to these individuals, they are willing to hear, yeah, to, they are willing also to listen to you, or there are people who do not maybe trust you. So however much you are pursuing such kind of policies to be changed, it will not be successful just because the members do not trust you. So it also depends on your standing or your reputation in that society. Then uh, another factor that uh, greatly influences the success of advocacy campaign is uh, your ability now to network. So networking here means uh, establishing linkages with other like-minded people or maybe institutions or organizations. For example, if you are maybe advocating on an issue pertaining to HIV and AIDS, it's good that you also look for those other like-minded institutions and be in a position now to network or maybe partner with them. For example, the National AIDS Control Council. So that means that they are also likely to influence or maybe to support you in one way or another. Then another factor that uh, also influences the success of advocacy campaign is uh, availability of resources for advocacy. So in this advocacy process, there are activities that are supposed to be carried out. So these activities need resources. So do we have the resources uh, to carry out those activities or not? So that's why it is important that uh, we mobilize adequate resources because we need them to publicize that advocacy issue, either through maybe mass media, that, is, that could be maybe electronic or maybe print media. And it is something that requires also uh, financial resources and even other uh, material resources. Uh, another factor we have is the social and cultural context that is uh, in the country. So this is just uh, in line with the attitudes of the government, the non-governmental organizations, the community-based organizations, ETC. Are they also favoring that particular process or they are not for that particular process? Then uh, we also talk about technology. That is the level of technology that is being used. For example, in a poorly developed technology, there will be issues with uh, communication and advocacy is all about communication and whenever there is uh, any barrier or breakdown in communication this means that uh, uh, the targets will not be in a position to get the information about what you are advocating on then uh, believe that one is clear in line with the factors that influence advocacy process i want us now to proceed uh, to the principles of advocacy so principles of advocacy these are just some of the guidelines which, if followed, they can also enhance the success of advocacy process. The principles provide a blueprint on how to go about an advocacy campaign. And the first principle is that advocacy activities should avoid increasing harm. 
to those individuals that you are representing. So you come in as an advocacy team so that you can uh, represent this group. So all those activities that you will be doing should not uh, increase harm to these individuals. So you are there now to rescue them. You are there now to uh, maybe avoid such kind of uh, a negative effects that uh, are coming as a result of the policies that are being implemented. So when you come in as a advocacy team, you should uh, try as much as possible to ensure that uh, your activities uh, do not increase harm to these individuals. For example, uh, these are people who are poor, their rights are being violated. So you come in so that you can speak on behalf of these individuals. Then you are asking them now to pay you something. So where will these people get money so that they can pay you in order to speak on their behalf? That means that you are also increasing harm to these individuals. Another principle is that uh, uh, all advocacy activities should aim to protect the rights of people. So what you are doing here is that uh, you want to ensure that uh, the rights of all these people or the rights of the human beings are not, are not uh, uh, violated in one way or another. So all activities that you do, they are all about protecting uh, human rights. Uh, another one is that uh, advocacy activities should be based on research findings. You need to go and meet the policy makers. You must be well versed with the advocacy issue. So if you've not done research, it will be difficult for you now to get to understand if the policy in question is really affecting these people negatively or positively. So you must base all your activities on what? The research findings. Number four is so that all advocacy activities should concentrate on preventive, eradicating, and even supportive means. You are preventing, you are eradicating. To prevent means to avoid that thing from happening. Uh, to eradicate means to do away with it completely. It could be a policy. So we want that policy to be abolished. And supportive, maybe we need also to support these individuals. Another one is uh, that advocacy activities should fit in the social, cultural, and also political, and even the legal context. We are not using these activities so that we can violate the law of the land, for example, or so that we can uh, maybe uh, affect or maybe violate the cultural uh, practices or maybe the cultural values of the society or the cultural norms of the society. So these activities must fit in all those uh, contexts. Uh, the second last is that uh, advocacy activities should target different sectors in the, in the society. And these sectors are the ones that are responsible now for these individuals. Be it maybe uh, the government, be it maybe the non-governmental ETC. And finally is that uh, advocacy activities should lead to establishing new policies and programs if need be. We want the policy to be changed. We want to eradicate this particular policy. Then we must come up with a new, the new policy or the program. So these are just some of the guidelines that uh, have to be adhered to by you as the advocacy team. So we'll have to stop there for today's lesson. We'll have to meet in the next class.